Yeah, back on the Sportsman Zone, switching lanes now to track and field and to what I consider to be a rather disturbing development. Now, the Antigua and Barbuda Athletics Association, ABAA, has been facing criticism for its failure to register four athletes who qualified to represent the country at the August 27-31 to 31 World Athletics Under-20 Championship in Lima, Peru. Now, the ABAA missed the extended deadline for athletes' registration last Tuesday. The athletes impacted by this administrative mishap are the 2022 Carifta Games Under-17 100 champion, Dwayne Fleming, the 2024 Carifta Games Under-20 girls 100-meter bronze medalist, Gialina Dowdy, three-time Under-20 100 finalist, Ajani Daly, and the 2023 NACAC Under-18 sprint double champion, Cassia Daly. Mm, not small names there. Joining us to give... A clearer insight into this issue is the man responsible for guiding the careers of the affected athletes. Teddy Daly, head coach of Power Speed Endurance Track Club. Welcome to the Sportsman Zone. It is unfortunate that it is under these circumstances that we are speaking. Um, first of all, have you yet gotten from the Antigua and Barbuda Athletics Association a reason for the non-registration of these athletes, why they missed the deadline, how it happened? Um, to this day, I have not received any information from the association regarding the, the mishap. Have you None reached whatsoever. out to them? Have they, have they spoken to you any at all? Have they responded to you any at all? Well, I had asked the president to come and explain to the athletes uh, I think the day that we learned, they would not be able to participate in these games. I called the president and I asked him to come and explain to the athletes because I just felt that it, it made sense for him as the president to come and explain to them. He, um, we set up a meeting, he, he came, but um, all he said was that he don't understand how this happened because he asked people to do the registration and apparently they didn't. And he felt that was enough, but um, of course that leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, talk to us about, you know, what the athletes, I mean, we can just imagine what they're going through. They have trained all year. They have put together all very good seasons. And by the way, let's get it out there right away that you are the father of Ajani Daly. Um, you're also related to Cassia. Um, that's that's correct. He's yes, your that's nephew. Right. Johnny is my son, and Cassia is my nephew. Th there you go. So you are pretty close, not just as coach, but as a family member to at least two of the athletes. Talk to me about how difficult this has been for them. Well, um, it was extremely difficult. Um, we had to uh, provide for, for counselling for them. Um, the day after. We went on an outing just to be together with the, the parents, myself, um, my brother, who is Kasaya's dad, um, the, pair, the mother of Jelena Dowdy, and, you know, Queen Fleming, along with my wife and Kasaya's mother. We all went on an outing just to try and calm them down a little bit, just to let them know that all is not lost. Um, they understand they were in the best shape of their life. They really put in some work during carnival, because it's carnival season has just ended in Antigua. During carnival, when everybody's in town, having fun and so on, these children were at the, the track training. You know, you had several activities that young people would gravitate to, and they missed all of that because obviously they're athletes, and this is the time of, of the season when athletes are performing or competing at the highest levels. And they were serious about what they were doing. They did not mind having to miss those events in order to be ready for World Juniors. Yeah, and in the case of your son specifically, Ajani, who, by the way, has been in the last three Carifta Under-20 finals, um, eighth in Kingston, fourth in the Bahamas last year, and I think fourth again in St. George's Grenada this year. This is his last year as a junior. This would be his last opportunity um, to, to, to do something big on the global junior stage. I can only imagine how difficult it must be, especially for him. Yes, it was extremely difficult. Um, again, he dedicated himself. 
he felt that um, for Carifta this year, he was not in the best shape. Um, we had some work on his start. Uh, he was finishing better, but the start, we had to do some work on it, and he was coming out really well. You see, look at the picture right there. You see how he's coming out now compared to um, Carifta. And he felt that, you know, this is my time. I can go there, I can make the finals, and have a good chance to win a medal. And to see it all go down for naught, yes, he was very, very disturbed about that. Yeah, and Teddy, you know, we have to look at the reality of the situation here and uh, the sort of uh, horrific disappointment these athletes would be enduring at the moment. We're just coming out of the Olympic Games, Teddy, and I know for sure that these athletes would have been looking at the Olympic Games and be inspired by a lot of what they had seen there, not the least of which would have been the performance of Rai Benjamin, who previously represented Antigua and Barbuda, now representing the United States, winning the 400-meter hurdles. Um, can you confirm to us that the Olympics, um, or the Olympic spirit, or the Olympic watching by these athletes in the past couple of weeks would have heightened their anticipation to compete at the world level? Yes, it did, definitely. And um, Rai is somebody who didn't know personally, Rai comes to Antigua all the time, come and sit down, chat with them a little bit, and so on and so forth. And then they were so impressed by um, the performance of, of, of Julian Alfred. And, um, and they look and they saw Dominica winning a gold medal. Yeah. Um, Tia Lafond, yeah. Tia, yes, Tia Lafond winning a gold medal. You know, they were, they were discussing it, and sometimes... Um, we set up training schedule to allow them to, to, to see the events and then come to training. Mm -hmm. So when we're there, sometimes we will discuss, I will ask them to comment on what they saw, if they, you know, how people executed mistakes that were made and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And many times they were right on the ball. They were saying some of the same things that you guys were saying, you know, <laughs> and some of the things that I saw, the same thing that they saw. Yeah. And this was all about in showing that they were learning, they were understanding, and they were saying, you know, like, it's our time now. We're, we're, we're coming up next, right? So um, we want to go out there and be at our best. And then to hear, you know, two weeks before the event that they would not be able to go because they were not registered, yeah. not because they didn't make the, the qualifying standards, not because they got injured, not because of finance, not because because they were not registered, mm. something that could have taken 10 minutes to do. Yeah, they, this will not make you feel any better, Teddy, but there was a Jamaican athlete that had made the Olympic team to go to Paris a couple of weeks ago, and the local association in Jamaica failed to submit, that, submit the athlete's name, and, and the athlete, in the end, did not uh, get the opportunity to go to Paris. As I said, not that that will make you feel any better. Yes, well, uh, but, we learned of that, and we thought that, you know, that was... Uh, that was terrible that the, the, the athlete didn't get to go and represent Jamaica, not knowing that down the road we are going to find out that all four of our athletes that were able to go to um, World Juniors would not have been able to. Yeah, I just referenced Rai Benjamin, who had represented Antigua and Barbuda at the Carifta Games and the World Youth and at the World Relays uh, in his mid-teens. And uh, our investigation suggests to us, uh, Teddy, that part of Rai Benjamin's decision to switch allegiance to the USA and not represent Antigua and Barbuda would have had something to do with his experience with the Athletic Association in Antigua and Barbuda when he represented the country with Everton Cornelius as president, who is still the president. Yes, um, I did mention that on um, an interview on Observer Radio. Um, when I represented us at Carifta Games in St. Kitts, running the 400 meters, I was the coach for the Carifta team at that point. And um, yes, he made attempts to, you know, talk to me about that. And then he like, apparently changed his mind and I didn't really press him. And, you know, only to find out now that he too, switch the legions because of, you know, negligence on behalf of yeah. our officials. Yeah. Um, Teddy, the Everton Cornelius has been president of the Athletic Association in Barbados now for, I think, two terms, probably in his third term. 
When, when would the next election be? And uh, how is uh, the Antigua and Barbuda track and field fraternity feeling about um, his, his tenure as, as president of this association? Well, um, a lot of people at this point is very displeased with what happened. Um, the election is due later this year. Um, I myself, I just started gathering signatures um, on a letter um, invoking Article 10 of our Constitution where we can call a special general meeting to discuss any grievances that we might have. And so two things that's going to be on the agenda. One, um, we need an explanation as to what happened, why the athletes were not registered to participate in Peru. One, and two, um, dissolving the executive and setting a, a, a date for elections. Because in any circumstances, even if the current president runs again, if, even if people vote for him again, he needs a new mandate in my, in my estimation. Mm -hmm. This cannot stand. You cannot have such a mishap and things continue as normal. Yeah, well, given what we have seen with this lack of registration, even past an extended deadline given, this is calamitous. And uh, obviously, this by itself, to me, would make a lot of people lose confidence in his tenure as president of the Athletic Association. But outside of this, has the country been satisfied with the governance for track and field in the country? Forget about what happened in this instance, although it's hard for you to do, but I just want to get a sense of outside of this latest bungling, uh, is there anything else about the administration under Cornelius's uh, governance that people are dissatisfied with? Well, yes, a lot of people um, are dissatisfied with the failure to, to properly delegate, um, to properly follow the guidelines of the Constitution, etc. And so, um, even outside of this, um, a lot of people felt that, you know, they've had enough of the current administration. Um, the last time that he was re-elected would have been 2022. Um, I think he won 26-18 in, in, in the polls. Would, would the same people be challenging him or are there other names surfacing as potential candidates? There are other names surfing. surfacing. Um, I myself, um, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring because there, there are lots of people within Antigua, corporate Antigua, etc., are saying that, you know, they need me to run because if not, they're not going to continue to support the association, you know, in our, um, with our, our um, meets, etc. They're not going to be part of, you know, what's happening now. It has to be fixed. So yep. I think at least three of us are going to put our hats in the ring um, and definitely changes will come. Yeah, Cleo Foster Harris challenge the law was a lone challenger for the last um, election cycle that there was. Uh, would 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 Harris still be in in the in the ring as well for a, a candidacy? Um, yes, he has declared that he would want to run. Yes, um, the problem with him, though, is that a lot of people feel that after he made the challenge last election, three years after, we haven't seen him, nobody sees him, he doesn't come around, he doesn't assist in anything, and a lot of people felt that this is where he, you know, dropped the ball. If you want to be leading some organization, if, whether or not you're at the helm, you should do whatever you can to assist and move the sport forward. And so the fact that he didn't do this a lot of people feel that, you know, that they're not going to support him this time around. Yeah, Teddy, thanks very much for joining us here on the Sportsbank Zone. We'll continue to, to, you know, follow this story as much as is um, possible. Um, really, really tough, and we understand it um, because for sure um, the athletes would have been looking forward to, to, to the World Under-20 Championships. We'll chat again. Thank you for having me, and I want to promise you that definitely... Changes will be made for the better. We're not going to just, this is not going to be swept under the rug. Changes will be made, and that's a promise. Yeah, thanks very much, um, um, Teddy Daly. Lance, you know, this is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. And I know that 
Teddy Bailey has said that essentially, you know, changes will come. Um, he himself is thinking about running. But the truth is the current president shouldn't have to wait for an extraordinary general meeting, shouldn't have to wait for anybody to say it. The president should step down immediately or sanction the members of his executive of the organization um, who did not get the job done. You are talking about athletes who have worked their, the entire year prepared for what is, to this point, the biggest com competition of their lives. And you have denied them that opportunity because you did not enter them. And we're not talking about one athlete on a 66-member team, which is bad, which is terrible and should not happen. But we're, in this case, talking about the entire team. Lance, you have a team of four. It probably takes 20 minutes for you to get on the computer and register these people for the World Under-20 Championships. How do you botch that? How do you mess that up? Anybody who does that should not be allowed to return to whatever office they are in. It is unforgivable in my estimation, Lance, what has happened in this situation. It is ridiculous and unfortunately, with these situations, only the athletes suffer. Because what happens in the Caribbean is that everybody else goes on about their business, business as usual, nothing happens, it's a nine-day wonder, and we move on. I say to the people of Antigua and Barbuda, this should not be allowed to be a nine-day wonder. Calamitous. Yeah, man, crazy.